part 1 of the Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet DLC is about to be released in just a few hours. And as we eagerly await for our adventure in the land of Kitakami, there is one specific question or discussion that has been popping up a lot of times during my streams that you can check out on twitch.tv slash notsoextrainer by the way. And the question is, how strong will things be? So hey, I'm not so a strainer, and what about the levels? Let's get into it. One of my biggest problems with Scarlet and Violet was the fact that there was no level scaling at all. In a game where you were free to roam as you wished, giving you basically full access to the map from the get-go, apart from some specific things that needed your ride on to have a specific ability, it felt like a bad decision. You could randomly find yourself in situations that you just couldn't get through, you explored a little bit too much and now the gym leader in front of you is 30 to 40 levels above your highest level Pokemon, or you simply forgot about Katie and now your level 50 Mioscarada is about to destroy a dead Ursa. While this wasn't as necessary for the quote unquote evil team, Team Star or the Titan Pokemon since they're not a part of an actual organization like the gym leaders are, the latter really should have some form of scaling. But we went through all of that, we beat the gyms the way they were presented to us and now we have a new adventure that will, for many, begin pretty late in their Paldean journey. While we didn't have anything to go off when the first DLC dropped, the Isle of Armor for Pokemon Sword and Shield, we now have that specific DLC as a way to try and determine what they'll do with this one. In Sword and Shield, you could access the DLC pretty early, just like you can in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And back then, the levels of the DLC would vary in two ways. Before you were a champion and after you were a champion. So that was the scaling and that created a bit of a problem. If you were starting out the game, it was great, you could level up a new team and basically have a second adventure, but if you were already deep into the game, everything was super weak. And if you had beaten the game, then your Pokemon were likely way above level 60 and, at that level, building a team wouldn't have the same shine since everything is basically evolved and any Pokemon you catch would also be ready to evolve. And this is what worries me the most about this new approach. While I am super happy that they actually opened up the world of Pokemon, I always wanted an open world Pokemon game and I think many of you also did, I fear that gyms and DLC will always suffer from this unless they start level scaling everything with your badges and even then it wouldn't be perfect. You're going to be able to enter Kitakami as soon as you start the treasure hunt, meaning you have zero badges. If we imagine that as the base level, we would start Kitakami as fresh new trainers with everyone else being the same. We would level up our starter there and evolve it there, beat that ogre pawn and be done with the Kitakami story, if that is the story. Then we come back to Paldea with a higher level team and without having a single badge. Once again, Katie's Teddy Ursa suffers a terrible fate. We could make the effects of this not as great by simply going from one place to the other and doing both adventures at the same time, but we're not even sure if we can do that. There's a chance that going to Kitakami forces us to play until the end, it is a school trip so we're in another region and the flying taxis are our only way to fast travel and maybe they don't even reach that place. So to me, the only ways for a new player to bypass this issue is to either not get at all or have two teams. But starting your adventure and not wanting to use your starter is not the usual if you ask me. And if you're already past the way home storyline, there's a chance that you just have to either go with your main team knowing that everything will be a lot weaker than you, assuming your main team is at a very high level, or build a new one that fits the level scaling of Kitakami, but knowing that you won't really train and evolve it in that new region we're about to explore. From the beginning, this always felt like the biggest issue with the open world approach since, in a way, it made the you can take the gyms in any order a bit redundant since you would always in a way be pushed to follow the right order with a lot of people even asking what that order was. The technical issues of Gen 9 are very likely related to the short development times of Pokemon games, so there is an obvious fix to that. But the issue with level scaling is one that I feel has no real solution, especially with DLC in the picture, and that should be one of their top priorities if open world is their vision for the future of the Pokemon franchise. And that is all I have for you today, a bit of a short and final take before the DLC releases and one that they might surprise me and make completely irrelevant in just a few hours. But what about you? How do you feel about level scaling in these games and going on into the DLC? Let me know in the comments down below. And now like the video if you like it, dislike if you don't and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon content and also ring the bell so you know when the next video is out. You can follow me on social media and Twitch, I stream there Wednesday to Sunday, not Saturday or general Discord, all the links are in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all on the next one.